Hey, our upgrade pace is looking solid right now. But I do think we need to push harder if we want to stay competitive. Here's the report. What's up guys? Welcome back to the Saber Career Mode, part number seven for the Canadian Grand Prix in season one. And this is what this is the R and D report that uh, Chris gave us. And as you can see, uh, McLaren and Honda have actually moved a little bit further ahead of us in terms of the uh, vehicle performance charts, which is a bit concerning, but not too concerned about it at the moment because we've got an upgrade coming in for the next race in Baku, Azerbaijan. So uh, yeah, hopefully we can close that gap up back back up again, and then we'll try and see if we can get back in front of the, back in front of them uh, a bit later on. This is just the upgrade we are uh, we are waiting on. For Azerbaijan, which is the uh, first powertrain upgrade that we're going to be getting, which means we'll have an upgrade in each of the uh, main uh, tree development uh, side of things or car development side of things, and along with the uh, two durability upgrades that we currently have. So, without further ado, let's get into practice. Here we are, live in Montreal at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, where the teams are making final preparations before today's practice session gets underway. In 1999, the outside track wall, situated on the last corner of the lap, ended the race of three Formula One world champions, Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher, and Jacques Villeneuve. Since then, the wall has come to be known to fans around the world as the infamous Wall of Champions. Turns 13 and 14 are definitely the most demanding corners on the track. A quick chicane section entering at over 180 miles per hour, drivers use plenty of curb and get very close to the wall but hitting those curbs at the wrong angle can easily put the car offline. You'll see a lot of drivers bail out of committing into turn 13 using the escape road to avoid contact with the wall. All right, here we are in practice one on a glorious day at the uh, Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve as we start the track acclimatization. Practice is back to normal after the uh, shenanigans and nonsense that happened in uh, Monaco where we suffered quite a few crashes. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please have a look at the uh, last episode. But anyways, getting into track acclimatization right now, um, pretty straightforward to uh, nail this circuit. Um, seems uh, I quite like driving around Canada at the moment, considering what happened in last year's game. We were able to get a fourth place finish in a mana car, which was absolutely insane. In fairness, though, that mana car was very highly uh, developed throughout the season, and also the uh, the, it was, the uh, upgrade tree wasn't as sophisticated as what it is. In this particular game, we managed to get the um, maximum number of uh, resource points available in the uh, track conversation. Then we then move on into the tire wear, and as you can see, we're currently in the uh, purple zone. We've got a Red Bull going up the inside of us. That's Max Verstappen go up the inside of us into the uh, final chicane right there. F fortunately for us, he doesn't put us off too much, and that and we are able to get the uh, maximum objective we were able to do in the uh, tire wear, which is absolutely fantastic. Complete uh, contrast to what we managed to do in. Uh, Monaco, when we were only able to just about get the uh, good overall tyre wear, uh, man tyre wear um, uh, objective. Anyways, we're now on to into the race strategy, mainly because the weather does take a bit of a turn for the worse in the uh, second practice. So I thought, let's get the race strategy in involved, or get this race strategy uh, sorted out in this um, session. And, or, I have a little bit of a moment, though, on the second lap where I hit the uh, wall of champions. Fortunately, no damage, though, and we don't... Uh, end up having to end up binning the car in the wall but uh, that was pretty close and anyways we managed to get the uh, maximum available resource points from the race strategy as well so so far three out of three when it comes to the uh, practice programs but then and that was the end of our uh, first practice I mentioned before uh, on in into practice two now and uh, as you can see the weather has completely changed from practice one to practice two and we're currently on the uh, fuel saving uh, practice program and I'm hoping that we can actually get to make it four out of four when it comes to the practice programs and actually we we're able to uh, achieve this as we uh, come up towards the uh, final couple of corners. We've got another Red Bull going up the inside of us. This time it is Daniel Ricciardo going up in, into the chicane. I thought it was going to put us off right on the e right on the end of the uh, the lap. As you can see, we're really close to getting the uh, objective and it looks like we, we just about do it just as we uh, cross the line. It was pretty nip and tuck with the uh, fuel right there, but we were able to achieve that objective when we managed to go four out of four then into practice three we were then into the uh, final practice program which is the qualifying program and I was feeling pretty good with this because of our um, um, of, because of my um, history around this particular circuit and also the fact that I really enjoy going around the circuit and on the first lap we were able to get to the uh, green lap time right there but it was a uh, very nip and tuck with the uh, purple laps and as you can see 
They're asking us to go quite far up the uh, field with this uh, particular lap time. It's now heading towards the final chicane. We're down on time, but we somehow managed to nail the final chicane right there. And we're gaining time as we head up towards the line. It's going to be really close with the time. And we're just about able to do it. There, there it is. There's, there's five out of five um, uh, practice programs that have gone purple. And that was absolutely fantastic. And also, we were able to finish in 10th place in that final practice session that just as before the rain came down, which was uh, absolutely fantastic. So, I'm hoping that's a good sign for the uh, qu for, quali for the qualifying session to come up. In the meantime, though, we've got a cutscene to watch. So, uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Hey. Looks like you've got a bit of rivalry going on out there. This is good. Gets people talking about you. Just make sure you outperform them, okay? Thank you, Emma. So, uh, looks like we've got a brand new rivalry on our hands. And as you can see, it is Fernando Alonso that is that is our new rival after we uh, managed to beat uh, Pascal Verline, who was our first rival, primarily because he is our uh, teammate when you first start off the uh, career mode. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to move on to someone else. And looks like we've got a pretty realistic target on our hands with uh, Alonso. In the previous games, um, I think it took into account where you were in the standings rather than uh, car performance. So, uh yeah, I'm, f I'm thankful that we're not up against, say, a Daniel Ricciardo or a, uh, a Felipe Massa, for example, which would have been absolutely impossible to actually win the rivalry in that particular case. But yeah, that's our new rivalry. Let rivalry. Let's get into qualifying now. Hello and welcome from the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, home to the Canadian Grand Prix, for today's qualifying session. Now then, Anthony Davidson, you're not getting any younger, but you have been involved in your fair share of qualifying sessions in a, an illustrious 30-year career. How do you deal with the pressure when you had that one chance to deliver a perfect lap? It's not so much about dealing with the pressure, it's more about how you approach the risk and just how much of it are you willing to take. You're constantly balancing the car on the edge of grip from braking, cornering and traction. And over the course of a lap, it's easy to get that balance wrong. And that's why achieving the perfect lap is almost impossible. As you say, I've been doing this 30 years now, and it never gets any easier. Alright, here we are, ready to start our first lap in Q1 on the Ultra Soft tyres. Again, as always, that first lap is just going to be one of those sighter laps, just so we've got a time on the board, and therefore can then improve with a, uh, a lap delta on the, uh, the timing pages. But anyways, as, as we now cut towards the... Uh, end of the second lap as you can see we're up on our initial time we're currently sitting in about p9 at the moment and we move up to p7 with that improvement but unfortunately that does actually turn into a p15 so we need to go out again and as you can see we're currently up in the uh, first sector going through the uh, nice little complex at the end of the uh, first sector right there i can't remember what number corner those two uh, sections are i will remember for next time though anyways we're now coming up towards the end of the lap we need to try and nail this last chicane as possible. Make sure we don't go into the Wall of Champions. We can we may nail it absolutely perfectly. And as you can see, we're just gaining time as we head up towards the line. Move up from 15th into 9th place. And a position that we actually hold for the rest of the uh, qualifying one. So it means that we have advanced into Q2 for the first time since uh, the Russian Grand Prix. So, which is absolutely fantastic. And having a quick look to see who got eliminated. Jolien Palmer, Lance Stroll, the uh, Canadian at its own race. Having a disappointing qualifying all the way down in 18th or 17th spot. Sorry, Verline is in 18th, but he managed to out-qualify both McLaren. So that was good, good effort from our teammate right there. Anyways, we're now into Q2. Similar sort of uh, tactic again. This first lap's mainly just to get a lap time on the board. This is actually a set of tyres that I used in Q1, so, which means we're saving the fresh set for the actual lap that we want to uh, put on the board. As you can see, we're now onto our second lap. We're up on our time at the moment. Currently sitting just outside the top 10 in P11 and I'm hoping we can improve on this time because that would mean we would be able to get into the top 10 for the first time in a, oh, first time in our career and also the first time for a Sauber to get into the top 10 for a good while. I can't remember exactly what uh, race it was. But anyways, we've moved up into an, an unbelievable P7. That actually becomes P9 as we now have a look at the, uh, the standings. But we've made it into the final part of qualifying. Interesting that Sergio Perez actually set the fastest time overall in the session. But as you can see, Grosjean, Hulkenberg, Ocon, Magnussen and Carlos Sainz are the five drivers that I've missed out on the top seven session. But this time, we've managed to get ourselves into the top ten for the very first time. Both for Sal but for Sauber, for the first time in for Sauber, I think since 2015. And the first time in our career after the uh, first, after seven attempts. So, absolutely amazing. 
We're in unfamiliar territory right here, but we're decided only to set one lap time because we've got no realistic chance of getting pole position. So, uh, aims to just get as fast a time as we can on the board with this only lap time. Just have to wait and see and save the rest of the set of tyres for uh, later on, possibly in the race. We move up into P4 for now, and that actually becomes, in the end, P7. So we end up out qualifying the man who was who finished um, just behind. Oh, finished on at top of Q2, which was uh, interesting. We out qualified both Perez and Massa, two Mercedes-powered cars, and also Kvyat down in tenth place, who we managed to out qualify in Q2. Sebastian Vettel taking a pole position. For the final part of qualifying and also just before we get into the race we actually had enough resource points to upgrade another component i decided to go into the durability because we've been having i'm having a bit of an issue with um maintaining the life of the uh, the turbocharger so what i've decided to do is try and invest some resource points into uh the durability of the turbocharger and reduce the wear by 30 percent which will be absolutely fantastic it seems to be out of the five engine components that you've got, um, it seems to be the uh, one engine component that seems to be wearing out the fastest compared to all the others. So let's get this in. It hopefully we will arrive for Azerbaijan along with the uh, power upgrade that we're expecting as well. So investing into that, let's hope that means that we won't have to uh, worry about uh, engine penalties later on in the future. But without further ado, let's get into the race now. It's a favourite for fans and drivers alike then here in Canada. We're used to seeing the unexpected happen here. And with me today to enjoy it all is Anthony Davidson, a man who knows firsthand the surprises that can pop up in this race. I do indeed. I had a good chance at some points here in 2007, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. My old colleague Takuma Sato though, he managed to finish six, so the team took home three valuable points. And that was a big boost to everyone at the time. I'm not sure I can think of anywhere else that so consistently provides the kind of late race excitement we get here. Obviously, towards the end of the Grand Prix, the brakes are getting worn, maybe the weather situation has changed, so there's a lot to keep fighting for all the way up to that final corner. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Raikkonen, Max Verstappen and Ricardo, Asalba, Perez, Massa and Daniel Kvyat, Grosjean, Hülkenberg, Esteban Ocon and Magnussen, Sainz, Palmer, Lance Stroll and Pascal Wehrlein. Van Dorn and Fernando Alonso starts from the back of the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. We've qualified above where we expect it to be, so try your best to hold on to this position in the race. Thanks for the pep talk, engineer. I'm hoping we can uh, do that, but we'll have to wait and see with regards to the, some of the f some fast cars behind us, especially uh, those uh, Force Indias and Williams Williams cars with those uh, Mercedes powered uh, engines. So, anyways, this is a, this is the strategy we're going to go for. A little bit different of uh, different situation for us because we have to start the race on the tire that we set our best lap in in Q2, and we only set one lap time on the. Uh, in that on that uh, in that session so uh means that we'll have a little bit like more lifespan on the uh, tire but as you can see there is the option of either going for a two-stop or a one-stop and i decide to go for the one-stop because it seems to have been working for us so far i kind of don't really want to lose track position and it looks like the super soft tire has got a pretty good uh range in terms of uh lap durability so that's um handy so we're going to go for the one-stop but of course we'll change it up if the safety car comes out or whatever but uh We'll just have to wait and see. I was having a quick adjustment to see if it, if it was a little bit faster to go on the soft tyre, but instead, I decided, in the end, I decided to go on the uh, super softs for the uh, second stint to the end of the race. So, if we now cut into the formation lap, objectives for the race is just to try and hold on to this position. As I mentioned before, we've got two f very fast Mercedes-powered cars just right behind us, and considering how bad our starts overall have been throughout the season, I'm expecting myself to lose a couple of positions. So that's... Uh, we're going to have to just wait and see on that front, and you never know, maybe they run into problems later on. But anyways, let's now get into the race.
Lights out and away we go and unfortunately, just as I predicted on the formation that we've been overtaken by Perez and also Massa trying to hold the position up the inside into turn one. But unfortunately, that becomes the outside for turn two. So, so that means we're going to lose that battle to the Williams of Massa and we've dropped down to P9. Looks as if Perez has had an excellent start and is challenging both Red Bulls. He's got in front of Verstappen, which is a, re a really good start from the uh, Force India driver after he started all the way down an eighth. So, anyways, we're trying to get back on terms with Massa, but we've got bigger problems with Roman Grosjean trying to go up the inside of us into the final corner, making a bit of contact as I close the door as we head up towards the Wall of Champions, very close to uh, squeezing the Haas driver into the into the wall, but fortunately, we do get away with it, though. But the Frenchman isn't done with us yet. As we're now on to lap two, Grosjean tries to go up the inside of us into the uh, right and left uh, hand combination prior to the hairpin. He's still on the outside, though, which becomes... The inside line as we head up towards the hairpin. He's got the uh, drive as well. It looks like he's going to go up the inside of us into the hairpin. Locks up a little bit, but he's going to get away with it, though, because he's on the inside. And we've now dropped into 10th place. And we've got uh, Kvyat now for company. Grosjean's had an excellent start in that Haas car. Uh, it seems like um, they seem to be doing well out there. Oh, it's relatively close to their home race. It's just, just a hop across the uh, border into America. Meanwhile, up front, we've got a battle for the lead. Vettel trying to... Get back on terms with Hamilton because he lost the lead to the Mercedes driver. Now it's three wide between his teammate Raikkonen and also the other fin of Valtteri Bottas in the uh, Mercedes. It looks like Vettel's just going to, be, going to be able to just about hold the position. And we've now got the two fins side by side making a bit of contact. Those are two combustible elements as we've seen in real life. The amount of times the two uh, fins have come together. As we're now on to lap three, we've got a yellow flag that's in play right now. It's headed through the uh, final chicane. We're going to go back on board. With our point of view in a minute, but uh, Nico Hulkenberg is out of the race, unfortunately for him and for Renault. And uh, yeah, he picks up some sort of engine failure, and he just pulls off to the uh, side of the track, very close to uh, not actually stopping at the chicane right there, which could have been a bit of a hazard. But uh, he fortunately stopped, and therefore, um, was the car was in a, a sort of safe place, and therefore uh, no safety car etc was required. But as you can see, we're now on board, board with Roman Grosjean's perspective. Massa tried to go up the inside of Verstappen but was defend was fended off by the Dutchman and Grosjean has got a great drive off the exit of the corner and is getting going to take another two positions away so it's an unbelievable drive so far from the Frenchman getting himself all the way up into P7 meanwhile back on board with our p point of view this is the uh, our point of view with Grosjean going up the inside of both Verstappen and Massa now this is an opportunity for us to get our own back on Massa after he overtook us at the start of the race we've got the inside line that's come up towards turn three right there we're going to try and just stick our nose in right there and we've taken the position back from the uh, the Williams and that was absolutely fantastic and really important to get that uh, move done. Up next is Max Verstappen on uh, lap 5. We managed to stick within the uh, the DRS zone of uh, Verstappen and we may have an opportunity to head up towards the uh, the, fi the fight onto the uh, start of lap number 6 and also possibly a late break maneuver up into turn 1. We're going to have to use the uh, be better on the brakes though compared to the Red Bull because of our uh, inferior straight line speed. But Verstappen's able to fend us off around the outside into turn two and unfortunately that was our only opportunity for us to make a move there. We tried to go up the inside of uh, turn three. I had a look but uh, it was a bit too risky for me and I didn't really want to uh, end up with a, a damaged front wing. We've also the fact that we've got Massa just behind us as well but uh, he, less, he doesn't become a threat though because he ends up coming into the pits relatively early actually. So it looks like he's on a two-stop strategy. As we're now on to uh, lap eight, we're just setting a uh, personal best as uh, we come through uh, turn one and to also turn two. We just did that this for a couple of laps pretty much as uh, some of the other drivers in front are making their uh, first pit stops. I think one of them is Sebastian Vettel which is the reason when, why we're now in front of the Ferrari as, it, as you can see right there up into P4 or P8 for now because uh, Vettel was the only man in front that's made a pit stop. As you can see Vettel's now trying to uh, overtake us on lap 11. He's got his nose up the inside there but unfortunately he was unable to uh, make the move stick. And because of this infighting, though, that's allowed Verstappen to get away from us. As Vettel will now use the superior Ferrari power to get power past us as we head up towards the final chicane. Without him necessarily having to uh, make a late braking manoeuvre up the inside right there. So we've dropped down into uh, P9, but that's that's fine. Anyways, we're now on to lap 13. Similar sort of story with Daniel Ricciardo overtaking us after his uh, first pit stop. He's on the soft tyre, though, so it looks like he might be going to the end of the race right there. So he could come into play when it comes to uh, near the front of the field. He might be able to uh, have a little ding-dong battle with uh, his former teammate Vettel 
a bit later on in the race. Anyways, we're now on to uh, lap 14 is actually our pit stop lap because we are we're obviously we're going to be doing the uh, one stop strategies to go straight on to the super soft. It's a little bit risky, but I'm hoping we're going to have enough tire life to uh, get to the end of the race there. Verstappen also going into the pits for soft tires, so we're going to be a similar sort of scenario that uh, we had a bit earlier on in the race where uh, Verstappen was on a, a harder compound tire than us, so we might be able to catch back on to him, but uh, we've got a little bit more of a, a, a battle to deal with with uh, Esteban Ocon, who was uh, gradually closing in on us as our tires were beginning to wear out. And speaking of the uh, Esteban Ocon, he is now comes into the pits one lap later, see if he can try and get the uh, overcut to work against us. He's going to go on to the super soft tyres, so same strategy for him as well. As we now come back on board to our point of view, start lap 16. Ocon is in the pits now, right now, and he's accelerating down towards turn 2. We're into turn 1 and turn 2 right now. It looks like we're just about going to rejoin ahead of the Force India. That was absolutely crucial, though, if we wanted to make sure that we were going to maintain a, uh, a points position. This is on board Ocon as he comes out of the pits. Look how close it is between us two. I mean, one small delay in the uh, pit stops um, for us, we would, and we would have been behind them anyways. We're now on to the uh, start of lap 17, and we're really just, just trying to set as fast a lap as possible. We've got Lance Stroll that, that is in front of us. He's already made his first pit stop, but he's due into the pits again because he's uh, he's had two stints on the ultra soft tyre. So his uh, ultra soft are starting to uh, fade a little bit, and we're able to start closing the gap to the... Uh, young Canadian at his uh, home Grand Prix. It's not been a Grand Prix so far for him to remember, but maybe the strategy is on will allow him to come back into play later on in the race. We're now on to uh, lap 21. The gap has come down to the Williams to a second and a half, so probably in the next lap or so we will be able to uh, possibly potentially make a move on the, uh, the Canadians, but unfortunately for us, we won't get the opportunity because he comes into the pits at the end of that lap and that, that will release us up into a uh, ninth place now to chase once again to chase after Verstappen who's a little bit further up the road right there as we come into uh, turn one and turn two. Stroll's now going to have to uh, just go out guns are blazing when it comes to his uh, final pit stop as we now come to the uh, towards the end of lap number 24 just getting a little uh, weather check just to make sure there was no uh, rain on the horizon because the clouds were looking quite gloomy and I didn't want any uh, sudden surprises to come to uh, spring up on us especially the fact that we're currently in a good position in P9 uh, in the points at the moment as we now come on to uh, towards the end of lap or start of lap 28 into the end of the first sector we've managed to close the gap back up to Verstappen with these uh, super soft tyres but I think we're going to run out of laps here and also a run out of tyre relative to the uh, Red Bull which means we're probably just going to have to deal with that but Lewis Hamilton is out of the Grand Prix though he was actually leading the race and it looks like the Mercedes has gone bang and unfortunately for him he's not going to be scoring a race victory today here in Canada. He's out of the Grand Prix. Oh, no, no. Really disappointing result for the Mercedes, especially trying to as they're trying to halt the Ferrari momentum that seems to be just continuing to build as the season progresses. Raikkonen is now once again leading the race. It looks like he's on course to win another race, and he's going to extend his championship lead here. We need to uh, find some. The Mercedes really need to find something right there. Anyways, we're now on to the towards the end of lap number 32 we've only got uh, a few more laps to go before we've got a yellow flag that's in play though and also i think there's a car in the middle of the road and it's roman grosjean and also there's a slow williams as well what the hell happened here I and mean, we need to have a look at the replay here this is on board the williams it's actually lance stroll and he gets a right rear puncture towards the end of the second sector the last couple of the two corners where roman grosjean was able to um overtake us earlier on in the race. This is on board Raikkonen. He get, very nearly gets uh, wiped out by the uh, really slow um, Williams there. And it was really close for him, to him being out of the race. But let's go on board with Roman Grosjean's perspective. And as you can see, he just slams right into Stroll, who was right on the racing line. How dangerous is that? I mean, I'm also surprised that a safety car wasn't even called for that. Stroll should really get, be ashamed of himself for, le for staying on the racing line right there. Verstappen also... Uh, just about gets away with uh, not hitting uh, Stroll. He's just about out of the way there. But anyways, we're now coming through the final cor few corners. We're going to come home in an unbelievable seventh place, which was handed to us thanks to a bit of luck, but we're going to take it anyways. That's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt.
And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It's a good result for Kimi Raikkonen, who extends his advantage at the top of the championship. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Well, I think it has to be Fernando Alonso. He got the strategy spot on and consistently had the pace to come through as well. On to the constructors then. Ferrari extend their lead at the top of the championship. Another team that will be satisfied with this Grand Prix is Sauber, whose good result moves them further up the championship. Well, what a weekend that has been. Please join us next time for another thrilling instalment of this Formula One season. So confirmation of the results from the Canadian Grand Prix. It's a finish 1-2 with Raikkonen taking the victory ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Ricardo managing to uh, fend off Vettel for the final podium position right there. Sergio Perez in an impressive fifth place for Force India. Verstappen in sixth, myself in seventh, Ocon in eighth, Sainz in ninth, and also Felipe Massa taking the final point in tenth. He had, th had a three-stop strategy right there, which was uh, a bit strange. I don't know why he uh, decided to make an extra... Pit stop. I don't know what the Williams guys were doing with the with the strategy right there. He could probably would have finished either seventh or eighth eighth if he'd uh, not gone for a uh, a third pit stop. But anyways, let's have a quick look and see what this has done to the drivers' championship. And as you heard from Crofty, Kimi Raikkonen extended his lead at the top of the championship, but it's now a Ferrari one-two with Vessel moving up into second thanks to uh, Hamilton's retirement. There's no other changes in the top ten. We just move ahead, further ahead of. Uh, Magnussen, but also uh, Esteban Ocon has uh, is the only driver in the uh, top 13 that's moved up a position. Ocon moving up into uh, 11th ahead of Felipe Massa after his 8th uh, place today, and Massa's only only managing a 10th place. If we now have a quick look at the Constructors' Championship, and expecting Ferrari to have extended their lead due to Mercedes only having one car scoring today, as you can see, that is the case. The top 4 also remain the same overall in terms of positions, but the big change is us moving back in front of uh, Haas, and that was a massive uh, disappointment for Haas after uh, they were on course to score a pretty good chunk of points thanks to uh, Grosjean. But Lance Stroll's uh, act of um, madness ensured that uh, Grosjean did not finish. And that meant we've now gone in front of Haas on count back because of the fact that we've got uh, two seventh places now on the uh, on the results table. So uh, that's the reason we're not, why we're now in uh, fifth place ahead of uh, Haas. Uh, Williams scored one point, and also Toro Rosso getting a couple of points. They're very close to uh, getting on to uh, double-digit points, and, and McLaren still yet to score after seven rounds. So uh, they need to start picking up points here if they want any chance of uh, getting off the uh, basement right there. But anyways, we're just collecting a good chunk of resource points from the uh, result today. Unfortunately, we don't have enough to uh, up make any more further upgrades, but we do, in fact, get a better core competency because of the fact we uh, completed our first race completed our first race as as first driver our bonus as first driver in terms of uh, resource points has gone up so that's absolutely fantastic and hopefully we can just continue to uh, uh, generate resource points and get the uh, car developed even further but anyways this is going to be the end of the episode today hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully we can continue the momentum that we obtained from this uh, positive uh, point score in this race and let's see if we can continue that momentum in round eight which is going to be the street circuit uh, in uh, Baku, Azerbaijan. So until then, see you later.